wow thanks everybody for coming it's like the last well second to last talk for me after this we've got the board meeting in the main hall and then we're done so I'm Richard. I'm here to talk about, well, dinosaurs, or as most other people know them, containerized applications, and how we, how we need to deal with them now they're out there, now users are really using them, now these, yeah, now we're starting to see the problems with them in the real world. And this is a variation on talk I did at FOSDEM earlier in the year. Um, so I'm going to start out uh, rehashing a lot of that. So if you've seen my talk, I'll try and run through it a little bit quicker. Um, and if you haven't and you're more interested, you can go back and watch that. And then I'll talk about some of the, the new and exciting stuff and why I had to rewrite my slides twice during this conference. Um, but really, when I, when I started looking at these technologies, looking at Snappy, looking at Flatback, and looking at AppImage, it, it struck me that I'd seen all of this before. And in fact, where I, where I first sort of saw similarities, was actually back in sort of the Windows architecture, the original Windows application architecture, and how Windows deals with loading up libraries and dependencies in the Windows world. And I mean, in, you know, to start sort of start off with, look at it from another perspective. Linux has a lot of you know, tr traditional Linux, traditional Linux packaging has an awful lot in common with Windows 3.1. You know. It, it's a similar world, you know. There is no ABI backwards compatibility. Things are constantly changing. Things are constantly evolved. There's one great big file system where everything is dumped into Windows, you know, Windows system or C Windows. Global identifiers for all the symbols. So everything starts clashing all over the place. It's an absolute maintenance nightmare. And you know, it's where the term DLL come, L comes from, because ultimately all developers want to do is have a nice, well simple environment to work with and you know in the windows windows 3.1 world they had you know had to de development and test every single possible dll combination that might be seen in the wild possibly anywhere and then every time they had a patch test that app patch in every single combination everywhere and then when there was a dependency or library patch test everything in every single combination everywhere and they would do that and they would try and, you know, Windows was being used everywhere and then they'd cry because it would all break anyway and, you know, it would all go horribly, horribly wrong. And Microsoft thought they could fix this. And they tried very, very well to do that and they were somewhat successful. You know, Windows 2000 introduced this concept of side-by-side -side assembly, which is basically containerization or, or, you know, application isolation for the Windows world having a separate memory space for every single application and all of its DLLs, loading up those DLLs privately from a folder in the file system, having Windows file protection, doing disk isolation of system DLLs, and having these fun fancy tools to you know, audit all of that and migrate those legacy applications and, and deal with those problems. And you, know, you ended up with this wonderful situation, if you're a Windows user, where you know your Windows, your Windows 2000 or later could in, could you know run an application for Win32 or even for POSIX or even OS2, all using these fancy little runtimes that were packaged up in that Windows environment. So you know problem solved, right? Well, no, of course, you know it all went horribly wrong, and not just because it was Microsoft doing it. You know there were very, very real sort of social and practical problems that evolved over time that we all saw. It was a security nightmare. All of these libraries, all of these dependencies end up lurking in countless folders, all being maintained to various degrees by the developers that put them there, all then becoming lovely security vulnerability, you know, security gaps attack services for things like WannaCry and other malware to you know go and abuse and misuse when certain applications are loaded in memory and are loading up the bad DLLs in question. It's also a maintenance nightmare as a user. You know, how do you then update that application on the user's machine? You know, anyone using Windows, how many application uploaders do you have in your system tray? I mean, everyone builds another system updater. And you know, it just doesn't scale. It ends up, especially in the open source world, being a bit of a legal nightmare. One of the biggest issues of getting open source software in Windows is actually this problem. It's actually figuring out, okay, can we put this open source DLL in this container with everything else we need to put in there to get the thing working? And you know, we, you know, we in the case of the Windows world with these DLL encompassed applications, you know, the 
the, the developer is the distributor. They have to worry about those legal issues and those legal concerns. But there is one b bunch of people happy, hard disk vendors, because everybody's using up more disk space. People need more bytes. You know, it's not terrible. And this was, yeah, like I say, since 2000. You know, meanwhile, in Linux land, we were looking on smugly, because we'd already solved all these problems, sort of. And you know, the way we solved these problems was with the traditional Linux distribution. And primarily, the, you know, the things that distributions brought to the table and still bring to the table today isn't the technical stuff, per se. You know, we all solve the technical problems in our own way. We all have our different package managers and our you know, different philosophies on how you should do this engineering and packaging stuff. But the, the, you know, the universal thing we all really bring to the table is we care about the security of the operating system and its applications in the context of a user looking after it. We're maintaining this stuff. We're auditing this stuff. We're constantly monitoring CVEs, pushing out these updates. And especially with the open source side of things, you know, a, secu a major security vulnerability it needs to be handled in a very particular way. You are going to have embargoed security mailing lists. You need to have trusted people on there. So you, you know, you need to, you know, need to have the right people there. Need to have the right relationships there to get on those embargoed lists. And you know, distributions play that key role of being there and able to get those fixes out before issues start hitting your code tree. And like I said. Maintaining it, packaging those updates, keeping them updated, dealing with upstreams, helping work with upstreams with that. And lawyers auditing all of this stuff, checking it's compatible, making sure that the licenses being chosen are sane and, and consistent with each other. So when I talk about this, dis you know, the distribution stuff, you know, lots of people, and it's kind of spawned by these new technologies or these, this kind of resurgence of the, the bundled application side of things of, you know, shared libraries are a problem. We're trying to solve the shared library problem. Dependencies are a pain in the ass. You know, de you know, I don't want to worry about the dependencies. I just want to worry about my app. Shared libraries do solve real problems. It's not just a case of being more efficient on disk, although that is a benefit as well. But having fewer libraries to worry about, having fewer dependencies to worry about, or having fewer repeating copies of the same dependency to worry about is a very beneficial thing, you know. When something goes wrong, when something is in, when something is insecure, you have fewer copies of that thing to worry about. You have fewer places to patch. You have less manpower required to patch it. Less double work sending t multiple copies of your vulnerable libssl out there or your vulnerable samba libraries out there, and that makes it easier to then review it, both as a user and as a distributor or as a developer who is distributing, and ensuring that legal and security compliance. That you know this is something you can trust and rely on today, tomorrow, and also when it stops being maintained, it's still doing it in a way that's you know at least was sane at the time of of stopping it. So from the open source sort of distribution side of things, mission accomplished, right? Well, no. Like I already said, the open, the open source distribution way of doing things was very similar to actually how Windows did it. You know, we, we still had these problems. We still had the issues of compatibility, of, of making sure all these bits and pieces work together, of you know, portability. How does an application built in one context work elsewhere? And, and how do you handle this issue of keeping something, keeping this software being delivered and just working and handling the fact that the open source world and therefore everything you're distributing is moving at a constantly changing pace of change. But we're not Windows. And when you're distributing in the open source world, there's different factors at play. So thinking about the compatibility issue, we all end up doing different distributions. We all end up having different libraries and different applications. Different applications then require different libraries, so the problem becomes you know, exponentially complicated. And application developers don't want to worry about all that mess. They just want to deliver their software in the hands of users. I get it. They don't want to have to worry about which choice of dependencies did certain distributions pick. But most of the time, they don't have to. In reality, distributions have their own maintainers. We have our own communities. You're all here, who care about this stuff and this part of it, and, and you know, are the sort of the second tier making sure that the application gets in the hands of users. And you know, you care about it in the same way as the upstream maintainers care about it. 
So very rarely does it really become a problem because most times it is really being done by the distro maintainers who care about this. And that's, you know, that's what you all do and that's what we've been doing for years and we're bloody good at it. You know, as you can just see in Tumbleweed where we repeatedly ship stuff as fast as the upstream shipping it. But it is importable. You know, it's OpenSUSE by OpenSUSE for OpenSUSE. And you know, an application developer wants to make sure that their software runs in as many different contexts as possible and as many different distributions as possible. And they don't want to learn a whole bunch of different build tools and they don't want to learn 20 different ways of doing things and they don't want to retest it 20 different places. But again, distribution communities often take care of that problem for the application developers anyway. And then pace of change. Every distribution does everything at a different pace. Heck, if you open SUSE, we do it at two different paces. You know, we leap, we do it regularly every year, with major versions every few years, and we do tumbleweed where we just go nuts and as fast as every upstream wants us to go. Um, but in the traditional old-fashioned way of doing things, um, you know, the, the regular release process gets in the way of that application delivery desire. You know, you c in the traditional model, you can't necessarily run the latest version of software on your stable OpenSUSE or your Debian system. You know, Debian in particular is the perfect example because they freeze so well and so hard and so solidly, you know, that that becomes even, even harder and they're proud of that. Um, Leap, we purposefully design it in a way to try and bend the issue around the edges and, and deliver faster stuff when we can, how we can. We have the build service, we have OpenQA to help with that. Um, but it's still a very real problem. Sometimes we just have to say no because the technology can't do it. But that problem, that balance, how do we deliver this software, that is again something that distributions you know, do currently take care, you know, take care of. So how much of a problem is it really? Doesn't matter, app image, flat pack, snappy are here to solve all the problems left anyway. Um, and you know, they exist to solve that issue. They exist to try and move these problems out of the, you know, out of the hand of the distributions or you know, reduce the need for the distributions to do this so application developers can get that software in the hands of users at the pace the application developers want to be. And they do so by providing a bundle containing the app and the libraries, all the dependencies they need, in then some kind of container or context or bubble or whatever. I'm going to keep on saying container, although technically speaking, you know, that's open for interpretation. And the big promises of all these technologies, despite details around the edges of how they do things, is to solve all these compatible issues, compatibility and portability issues. You know, it's only going to have the compatible libraries in the bundle, so you don't have to worry about anything from the distribution. You know, you just put your application there, everything you need, you're done. It'll be portable, it'll work everywhere, because all the dependencies will be solved in there, you'll never have to worry about the, you know, what does a distribution ship? And of course, that means you can ship it at the pace you want, whenever, however, don't have to worry about what the distribution's doing, and it's just going to work, and it's, it's going to be wonderful. That's the promise. Um, and then you have nice architecture diagrams, like the snappy one here, where you have really stupidly complicated architecture diagrams, like the flatback one, where you have this kind of model of, you know, just ignoring the operating system down the bottom, pretty much. It's just there, and then there is some layer on top of that, be it the frameworks or the runtimes, which you know provide this sort of layer of dependencies, which are an awful lot like the dependencies the distributions are currently doing anyway. And then the bundle itself contains the library, the code, the application, everything's fine. But it doesn't work. In practice, it doesn't work. Most of the time it does, but there are still some very, very real issues there. Um, and in fact, the, the biggest problem that comes around in reality when you start using these in production is this issue of you know, compatibility and portability. The myth is not true. Because at some point, be it app image, flat pack or snappy, there are some assumptions made about the stuff below the system. And we talked about this, like you know, you know, in the case of snap, in the case of snaps, you know, that is still the kernel. You know, everything above the kernel is assumed to be delivered by some snap somehow. 
but no kernel is equal. You know, every distribution has a different kernel with different configs. There's still problems there that get introduced by different, you know, by different kernel arrangements. Um, we see this in, in OpenSUSE most actually with uh, Steam, which isn't using one of these technologies, but basically uses the same approach of having a containerized Steam you know, runtime that gets put in your user area and, and run that way. And everything was fine on OpenSUSE with Steam for the longest time. It just worked, it did its job, we could move everything in OpenSUSE and everything was fine. And then we changed our glibc and it exploded spectacularly because their Steam runtime was built with an older glibc and therefore nothing would run anymore. All those libraries would go horribly, horribly wrong until we started scripting around injecting our glibc into there and rebuilding everything and it was a complete mess. And We've seen this issue with flat packs. We've seen this issue with some of the expands with snaps. We've seen the issue sometimes with, with app images. But one of the nice things and one of the reasons why I've always come into this liking app image is at least app image documents this problem. You know, it's stated there that it isn't trying to be a universal portable application solution. You're going to have to gather the binaries for the dependencies, for the distributions you're targeting. You're not going to magically solve this problem everywhere. But that means that if you're using these technologies, you still have to worry about all of the compatible dependencies which might not be provided by any distribution you might want to run it on. That's a lot of stuff to worry about. Heck, that's the stuff that we all do at OpenSUSE all the damn time, and it takes all of us to do it. If you don't get your head around that, your users need to expect crashes. So is it hopeful? Is it hopeless? You know. Well, you know, you talk to Flatpak people like this, oh no, we've solved it. You know, we've got these runtimes. Or on the snap side of things, you know, we've got these base snaps. Well, those base snaps, those runtimes just end up being some second curated middle distro. It's middleware for the containerized world. Cool. Fine, but you haven't solved the problem, you've just moved it into a different context. It's still another distribution. You're still having to have distribution engineers worry about this stuff and curate it and secure it and patch it and maintain it. Maybe it isn't a real solution. Maybe a real solution is actually figuring out a way of commonly agreeing between us the distributions as a platform, the application runtimes as a delivery mechanism and hopefully even the developers, on common, I use the word standards here, but let's say common agreements of, you know, what can you expect from your base system? What can application developers expect from their runtimes? So people can go into this and, and we won't just have random crashes when you install your app image or your snap on an OpenSUSE machine and it doesn't deliver the, you know, the kernel the way it's expected or the libraries the way it's expected. And until we do that, the compatibility problem isn't really going to be solved. The portability problem isn't really going to be solved. But what about pace of changes? And, you know, well, yeah, and what about it just working? Well, back to the Windows side of things. You know, this is what Windows did. This is very, very similar to what these technologies are doing as well. Is history just repeating itself? Because when you're delivering these libraries in there, it's going to be a security nightmare. Maybe not in a practical sense, you know, because we are talking about putting these stuff in jails and, and, you know, some kind of isolation. But to be honest, when it comes to these, you know, these bits of isolation, it's a firewall, and I don't like the idea of trusting a firewall with my system security. I like a firewall being there when everything goes wrong and it's my last line of defense, but it's not my first line of defense. I want sensible engineering as my first line of defense. And therefore, I kind of forget about the isolation entirely and want to make sure that someone is taking care of the security of the libraries in my bundle and assume that at some point someone's going to escape the jail. There's no answer for that right now. There's no clean answer for that right now. Or there wasn't a week ago. Um, same with the maintenance side of things. You know, who's going to be patching these libraries in there? Who's going to be making sure that those libraries are moving forward? Who's going to be making sure that what I've, what I've installed is actually legally allowed to be on my machine? Who's going to make sure that these depend, you know, that the, yeah, you know, 
the, the GPO is, you know, success, you know, correctly being used and cited in there with my LGPO stuff, for example. But it's okay. Storage vendors will still be happy because all these bundles are going to be using up more disk space. And then this is where my slide deck all starts going out of you know, kilter because I was going to then talk about how, you know, we need to work, you know, need to start conveying these responsibilities to, you know, the various maintainers of App Image and Flatpak and Snappy and start talking about, you know, how are we going to get this message out there? And I was going to be talking about, you know, considering, you know, ABI changes and, you know, how do you rebuild bundles when ABI changes happen? And I was going to be talking about testing all of that. And I was going to be talking about the security and maintenance issues. And I was going to ask the question about, you know, what are we going to do? Um, and, and I was going to suggest a few things as well, but um, it all went horribly, horribly wrong because of the OpenSUSE conference. Um, it's all changed. My question no longer is, what are we going to do? It's actually what has been done already. And, well, I was going to change the title of this talk because, you yeah, know, from being a real bad skeptic of all these technologies, um, given what's been done, I now love App Image. I really love App Image. Um, because, well, OBS now builds App Images. Our build service now can take our packages that we have in there for Tumbleweed, for Leap, and for everything else, even our develop projects, and build App Images from that. So all those problems about the sort of security compliance, the security auditing, license tracking, dependency tracking, figuring out how to rebuild stuff, when to rebuild stuff, all these problems that we'd already solved in the distribution space, the app image guys by working with us have now solved it in the app image space as well. And you know, often we can host them on the build service too, so we have even you know, changed the context of how you can deliver the software to the users. And we've managed to, you know, the OBS team have managed to do all of this without impeding App Image's strengths and flexibilities of just being a nice, easy, lightweight of doing this thing in, you know, in the hands of users. It just gets there. It's easy to deploy, you know, one single click run, it unpacks, it runs. This is really exciting. This totally changes my outlook on all these technologies because suddenly, I don't have to be a skeptic anymore. I trust the build service. I trust the tools we have there. I trust the processes we have there. And it makes both sides of the equation more interesting to me. Um, just a few ideas that have kind of been bouncing around my head since, <laughs> since I heard about this two days ago. Um, you know, I, I want to see if we can do something like open SUSE leap with app images with user space applications being built from the tumbleweed sources. Um, you know, because the build service can do that. You know, we can build tumbleweed sources for, for Leap. We can then wrap that all up in an app image. And, you know, last year I had this really long one hour ranty talk about how I hated develop projects. Well, well now we can kill them um, in the sense of killing the publishing of them. We still need them for building stuff for tumbleweed. But, you know, user, if we do this, users will be able to hopefully get the latest version of LibreOffice on their Leap machine without having to change everything on their Leap machine. That's really cool. And we announced earlier this week OpenSUSE Cubic, which is a very, uh, well, currently very much targeted for the Docker and Kubernetes world of, of a very, very stable atomic file system, atomic distribution um, with transactional updates on the base system. Well, now we have this. I mean, if we shove a graphical environment on there, maybe a nice tightly polished one, you know, something like GNOME, and do all of the user applications with this, Suddenly, there's an option of a open SUSE Chrome OS style thing, you know, and a you know a nice simple appliance for your grandma, which is something you know. Well, when someone talked to me about that, you know, just last week, I said, "Yeah, good luck, have fun. It's crazy. It would take tons of people, tons of hours, and it's never going to happen." Now I can see one or two maintainers taking what we do in the build service and taking what the App Image guys have done with us, and being able to knock that out in a couple of weeks. That is awesome. Admittedly, I'm not going to use it, but it's awesome if someone wants to take and use it. And there was, you know, talk today about the uh, uh, about Package Hub and all the stuff we're going in Package Hub. And I, I have a <laughs> okay. Hopefully, no one from SUSE sees this part. Um, I have a bit of a mixed opinion of Package Hub um, because it's really exciting me that we're delivering open SUSE packages to enterprise customers, um, but at the same time. 
uh, the way we're doing it is really similar to how tumbleweed back like three years ago used to be, where you know Slee is a really nice stable base, and we keep on putting new versions of everything into package up, you know, rolling along the top of that. And with old tumbleweed, we learned eventually that gets too big and too unwieldy, and it you know starts <laughs> you know, starts getting a little bit breaky. Um, Hasn't had that problem with, with Package Hub yet, but that's a risk if Package Hub just keeps on ballooning. Um, well, for the user space tools, the user space applications at least, the, the, you know, the desktop applications, you know, app, this app image stuff gives us an easy way of insulating that problem. We can actually, you know, define the scope a little bit better, start using the app images there, maybe start delivering app images to, to sleep via Package Hub. Solves the same problem, does it in a slightly more sane way and uses these technologies to solve real problems that we would otherwise run headlong into. But I'm not finished, because this is just app image. And so I was thinking, you know, what's left? Well, snappy, flatback, sorry. With, with this now, you're not just, le you know, you're not just part of the equation, you're, you're behind. App image now has a better build story than you do. They've got a stronger compliance story than you do. And they've got a more straightforward user experience in different distributions than you do, because you still haven't got SnapD in, in Tumbleweed. And even if you ignore the technical stuff and you want to argue the details with me, they're kicking your ass when it comes to working with others. Because it's not just the fact that you're both here, it's the tone, it's the style, it's the way they've really got their hands dirty and messed around with the build service. Please be more like App Image. It's been so fun working with them and seeing them seeing them change my mind and you know seeing us change their mind a little bit about a few things you know we've got the tools we've got the talent please work with us because i think we can do really exciting things in this space um but it's going to need to you know work in the kind of way that these guys already are working with us um you know because it's just really exciting doing it that way and it's not all good news or it's not all bad news for you there are still problems across the entire thing Dependency hell is still on the horizon. Um, all of these tools still have very limited or no way of really solving this issue of what's coming from the base system. You know, there's still assumptions being made there. Um, we need to get together. These tools need to get together, the distributions need together, and we need to discuss common standards and design common standards so everybody can go into this equation with simple ideas of what's going on there. Without that common understanding, application developers will just find frustration, and users will just find crashed stuff, and distributions will just, well, keep on doing what they're doing at the context they're doing, and then we'll actually miss out on cool opportunities to use this stuff in the way like I was talking about. And security, sandboxing, the app isolation side of things is a complete mess right now. Like everybody has cool ideas and no one's finished implementing anything. Um, the app image side of things, well, I kind of understand that because they've gone into this with the approach of, you know, use fire jail or whatever the hell you want. That's cool, but I'd like whatever the hell you want to be a little more defined than that. Um, you know, SnapD obviously has the app armor side of things. We love app armor, but you know, your patches aren't upstreamed yet. Um, and you know, I know yet, that's cool. You're fixing that, but you know, let's get that done. Let's get that in. Um, because, well, if I had my way of doing my way, I'd like to see app armor kind of become the single way of doing this. I think it makes more sense. I understand app armor well more than I can understand bubble wrap and what they're trying to do there. I think that bubble wrap stuff is a little bit too desktop application orientated which is cool for desktop applications, but you know, th there's scope here for using it you know, in other weird and wonderful ways in IoT and stuff. So let's see what we can do about getting AppArmor in there, polished up, you know, do it all the way. And with that, I just want to kind of say thank you. I mean, this is becoming a really good lesson for me of, you know, two months ago I was screaming that I thought the world was ending and this would never work out all right. And you know, I've become a convert. I want to help make this better now. Um, so no, let's just get on to it. And does anybody have any questions? Anybody? Go on then. Obviously. Obviously. I was hoping you did. Well, I, oh, Mike, thank you. So I'm curious about security and uh, licensing compliance you mentioned. So you say you have a app image built on OBS. Yes. What does actually check that maybe that app image is built from a Git tree somewhere else? That you're still compliant. That doesn't. That the Git tree does not contain stuff under a different incompatible license. 
and it doesn't contain a bundled copy of a library that has security vulnerabilities. You're technically right. Um, I mean, yeah, if someone's taking an OBS project, a random home OBS project, and building app images from that, there's no magic license solution there. But, um, you know, like we were talking about earlier this week, like my other talk um, from Friday, you know, if you look at what we're doing with Tumbleweed, you've got a pool of software in Tumbleweed where we are keeping up with upstreams. You know, hunt, you know heck, we we're just about to publish a new GCC 7 version that we did while we were here. You know, the pace of change in Tumbleweed is fine. So you've got this huge pool that is audited, that is there, that is done, that's keeping up with upstreams. So if you're building your app image based on Tumbleweed packages, you know, you've just got to worry then about your tiny little diff, your, your little part there, which means all of the other dependencies you're feeding into that, they've been audited, they've been checked, they work in the sense of, con of Tumbleweed, done. Completely agree, and snaps have exactly the same thing with the build snap I talked about. Yeah, but exactly you're doing the exactly same the same thing with Ubuntu, and only Ubuntu. Well, still we're doing it, and it's exactly the same as you do. Yeah, but with the build service way, you can do it with everything I just said with Tumbleweed, and you can do it with Ubuntu, sure. and you can do it with sure. Arch. And, and we're going to get it. Yeah, but you can do that your way, or you can just copy what they didn't do with the build service. No, because the problems are not like that. The problems are technical, below the stack, and um, it's not a problem of building. You can build it, you just can't run it yet. Once we get to the running, you can build it on top of anything and run it, and that's fine. So we have the same goal here. There's no disagreement. Okay. I'll believe it when I see it. Any more comments, questions? Cool. So uh, there's two issues I actually don't really see solved yet. So first of all, um, you, you still end up with a certain amount of size, right? Yeah. Because you need redundancy. And of course, um, one thing <laughs> that always concerns me is the laziness of developers because they start to rely on compatibility or outdated libraries. So especially if you have something large like, say, Framework X, which depends on a lot of libraries, uh, then you have a large footprint which becomes outdated now. I don't want that to happen with uh, stuff like I know, OpenSSL, for example. What do you think about that? I, it's a perfectly fair point. It's a f perfectly fair problem, and the answers are exactly, you know, I don't see that problem any different in the containerized application context than I do in the distribution one, actually. Um, you know, we, we, we suffer that same pain. Um, I'm kind of hoping that, that, you know, getting distributions around the table, distributions and projects around the table and with like the, the kind of common framework idea that we, we're sort of, you know, that's coalescing might give a little bit of a push to, you know, help drive that problem away a little bit. Um, you know, just like it did with like KDE and Leap needing a K an LTS release and, you know, KDE you know, making a commitment to that of, you know, that's how they're going to do that and, and solve that problem for us. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a very real problem. Um, we never really solved it on the dependence, on the distribution side of things on our own. This actually makes it potentially a little bit of a more, a better, it gives us a second chance to do it right this time. Hopefully. There's a question there. Yeah, I uh, if I will be developer of App Image, I still feel I uh, I that Android kick our ass because it's so much easier to develop for Android, and there is they have same uh, same problem. They have uh, let's call it distributors, which is actually hardware vendors that. They provide their phones, and they have some stable base, which is version Android. And yeah, of course, they have problems with security and such stuff. But I still feel that from developer point of view, it's much easier to develop for Android than any app images. Why? What's, what's the difference there? Because, I mean, ultimately, you know, an Android app is just yeah. a bundle of a whole bunch of dependencies. It might be easy, I can, well yeah, I, how would that be easier both, the question I've got to get to you then is, how is that easier both getting the application out in the first place, and then how is it easier maintaining it? Yeah, uh, one part that's easier, that they, they have a common base. They can easily, they, it's backward, uh, somehow backward compatible, and you can say I support this version of Android or newer. And yep. it, it keeps working, but uh, yeah, I think finding such base in 
Linux is, as you mentioned, in the Linux standard base is basically missing. And there's a lot, much more stuff in Android that's common than in Linux, which, which is, yeah, quite sucks because you have to bundle much more in, in Linux than on Android. Yeah, I, I, I can't argue with that part. That's why I think we need this. Um, because I think, you know, the problem with the Linux standard base is the scope was too broad. You know, it always was, you know, trying to define everything at every level of every bit of the stack. You know, the nice thing with these technologies is they, they push that problem down to a certain amount. I mean, Snap tries to push it down to the kernel. App Image tries to, you know, push it down quite, quite low as well. Flatpak keeps on changing its mind because then the runtimes move the line all over the place. But, you know, at least the line tries to get defined further down, further down the stack. So if we just figure out where that line is and define a common base below there, you know, common, what, let's say if it line gets drawn near the bottom of the kernel, you know, a basically common standard configs of the kernel, you know, what, what config is likely to be there, you know, what is an LTS, you know, are we going to follow the up, upstream LTS kernel and move along at that kind of pace? Just so you can, you know, tag that with a version and say, okay, I'm supporting, you know, container based version, blah, and then you get that solution. You get that situation you have with Android. I, I think we need that in the, the Linux container, containerized app side of things as well, totally. Yeah, and another part that sucks for me as developer is that we don't have a common place where to distribute such stuff. They have uh, the, the Android store, yep. or how they call it, and you just upload it there and you are fine. Every, every Android user, even if it's from different distribution, already have it. And we still miss it on Linux for, yeah, for many years. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 given the nature of the, the open source world, I don't think you will have a single place. I mean, you might have a dominant place, because um, you know someone's going to win the popularity war. Um, but whether it'll be a single one, I mean, even Snap has multiple store options already. Um, you know, OBS is now another one for App Image. It, it, there will be fragmentation there. I'd love to see a, a way of pulling it all together somehow, um, because I, I think that'll help in the long run. Um, but that's, I yeah, I, that's a problem for the fu for the future, I think. Um, but some yeah, something we have to worry about definitely. Yeah. So what I want to say is that we are still behind Android. We're still behind Android, no yeah. doubt about that. From developer point of view, and I think user point of view is also, um, yeah. Yeah, and that's them. and that's that's something that I, I'm, you know, that, that's a drum I think I'll keep on beating because I think if we can get a bit of more commonality between these different tool sets, it makes that a little bit easier to catch up with where Android are. Makes it a little bit easier, also to be honest, we're kind of one of the motivations behind this. I can see how this makes distributions lives easier. You know, less stuff for us to maintain. Um, you know, and we're all lazy, um, so you know, I can I can see how we can actually use this to change everything in a in a rather nice way. Um, but it's only going to work if we yeah kind of find ways of, of applying focus to that and coming up with some common standards and then seeing how the technologies actually shake out in the long run. Cool. Any more questions? No? Okay then. Thank you very much.